Hello and welcome to Youth and Social Life. My name is Damlola Ogushaki. And of course, you know, here on Youth and Social Life, we talk about the things that's, of course, connected to youths, um, their social life. Um, you know, we just bring them information that, you know, they really need. And we talk about the things going on in the world, things really helpful to the youths. And now, talking about that, uh, today, um, a guest is going to be joining me and he's going to be talking about, you know, NGOs. Uh, it's going to assist the youths. It's also uh, going to talk about the app and a book which he really uh, you know did create as a you know a means to help the youth in Africa not just in Nigeria and of course uh, joining me today is Dr. Shehi Maxine um, he, um, is a management consultant and also IT professional um, he is the founder of Yongo app and SMEEJ foundation is also the author of um, or is also the author of NGO mastery good afternoon Dr. Shehi uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today, Dr. Shea. It's my pleasure. Uh, please, can we meet you? Just tell us about uh, you know, who Dr. Shea is. Um, Dr. Shea is a management consultant and an IT professional. Um, I just finished my doctoral program for the, um, the University of Wales. I studied business uh, administration and also um, I did my master's in computing and information system uh, from the University of Greenwich. Um, I have passion for uh, the humanitarian sector. Uh, I volunteer for several NGOs, uh, both in the UK and also in Nigeria. So I specifically wrote, I'm an author, I wrote the book NGO Mastery, and also I came up with uh, the solution for uh, that will promote NGO activities uh, in Nigeria and also in Africa, uh, the Yungo Hub. Okay, you, you said, you know, you volunteer outside the country, you're also volunteering in Nigeria. You know, it's just like, you know, volunteering and Nigeria, we actually have it's two different words. You hardly see Nigerian youth volunteering to, you know, to help the society, the youth, um, you know, these NGOs. So what actually inspired you? Uh, why did you decide to start um, volunteering to help, you know, the NGOs? Um, I knew from beginning, even when I was in Nigeria, that uh, there are enormous opportunities uh, within the humanitarian sector. So um, I felt like it would be nice for me to volunteer to get experience uh, because I believe that for you to start anything in life, you need to get experience. So for you to get that experience, you need to learn from people that are ahead of you. So I started volunteering when I was in the university in Nigeria uh, because I felt that you can't start anything without learning from those that are ahead of you. So I started volunteering and I wrote even in my book, I also, there's a, a chapter in that book where I talked about volunteering. So the passion I have for the humanitarian sector and the less privileged in Africa uh, pushed me, moved me, like motivated me to, to start volunteering at an early stage. And when I get to the UK, I also uh, carry it on. And uh, I will say that uh, volunteering has given me uh, the opportunity for me to learn from people and also for me to gain experience that I'm using today to start my own NGO. Mm. OK, v volunteering in Nigeria and uh, vol volunteering you know, in United Kingdom, is it the same thing? What's the difference? Um, the difference is that in the UK, uh, you have people uh, that are willing to uh, to volunteer for organization. Even during the COVID, you see people coming out, you know, to uh, to give back to the society because to them it's like a culture. But in Nigeria, we don't have that culture where uh, people give back. Instead, people uh, want to see how uh, they can make money. But you won't blame them because the society in Nigeria and also in the UK, they are two different things. Um, to them in the UK, they have. They, they give to charity willingly, but in Nigeria is a new thing, and uh, with time, with people advocating, uh, things will improve. Uh, okay, let's talk about your S your MGO, that's S M E E J Foundation. Uh, can you tell us the you know meaning of S M E E J and uh, what the foundation is really all about? Uh, the the meaning is just like an acronym for uh, uh, Sheyi Maxim uh, Yeumi. So it's Smith, I call it Smith Foundation. Mm. Uh, that foundation basically uh, is a foundation uh, that will build the capacity of youth, that will also support 
uh, youth uh, in their uh, entrepreneurial journey uh, generally. So we want to bring solutions, strategic solutions that uh, we help NGOs and young entrepreneurs in Nigeria and also in Africa uh, to promote the activities. You will agree with me that most NGOs in Africa, they do a lot, but they don't really have that platform to uh, to promote what they are doing. So what we want to do is to provide strategic solutions uh, that will support them, that will also help them to uh, to promote the activities for people uh, in the diaspora to know about what they are doing. Hmm. What are the solutions that you have actually prepared down you know, to assist the youth in Africa? Um, the first solution is uh, the last time I came to Nigeria in the year 2018, and in 2018 when I came, I discovered I interviewed NGOs, I interviewed young entrepreneurs, especially the top NGOs in Nigeria, like Faith Foundation, Leap Africa, and some other NGOs. I discovered that most young entrepreneurs, they, they have products but they don't really have platform to showcase these products. So with the hub, with the Yongo hub, that's one solution we create for young people to be able to uh, to connect to technocrats uh, in the diaspora, and also for young people to uh, be able to showcase their products. Uh, we also assist them to build capacity because we, I noticed that when I came for my research, I noticed that most young people, especially uh, young people in Nigeria, they most of them they know what they want to do but they just need guidance so what we want to do is to ensure that like some of these uh, um, grants that they give in the international space and also grants within nigeria like the tony Lumelu foundation they give a grant to young entrepreneurs we want to bring experienced people to come and teach them how to write a proposal that they can use to assess some of these grants. So we'll be involving more in capacity building and also uh, with the younger hub, we'll also bring in technocrats from the diaspora to also support these young people. So uh, why did you decide to focus on you know, youth in Africa and not um, youth in diaspora? I mean, you are also not in Africa right now. Yes, uh, because I believe that the solution we are creating is specifically for Africa. We chose Africa because uh, in the diaspora, the diaspora they have uh, support, various support systems. But in Africa, they see young people uh, doing things on their own uh, because from the government angle, they are not really getting much. So youth in Africa, I believe they have, uh, they are passing through a lot. And um, if we give them more support, they will do exploit. Okay, um, you know, you said you actually came to. Um, Nigeria and you interviewed some youth and all that. I, I would like to ask you, what's your assessment on the NGOs in Nigeria? Uh, the NGOs in Nigeria, they are doing a lot, uh, but we don't have that regulatory uh, framework uh, for them to guide them on what to do. There's no accountability. Uh, we have a system where NGOs, people just wake up uh, to form NGOs without really having the structure uh, to to establish these NGOs in the first place. So uh, the NGO sector in Nigeria, there is no regulatory uh, uh, body for now that will look uh, that are looking into activities of NGOs. Like in the UK, you have the Charity Commission. You see every year they come back to give accounts of what they've done. But in Nigeria, the reverse is the case. So most NGOs, like some, we have credible ones, uh, but some people just wake up and use the NGO as a platform uh, for uh, to, 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 to siphon money. That shouldn't be so. We want to see uh, a proper framework where NGOs are regulated, where Africa will not just be like a continent where we collect aid without doing nothing with the, with the money. So we want to see more regulatory framework in place and also for NGOs to collaborate among themselves. Uh, as it is now, most NGOs, they do things on their own. If we are working on the same uh, sector, like we say we are working for humanity, right, then we should be able to collaborate and do things together. If you are doing cataracts and I have the equipment, I should be able to support you also to, 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 to give back to the society. That's what we want to promote and encourage. Mm, okay, before we actually talk about, you know, your book, um, you know, I, I would like to ask, you know, the, the reputation um, in Nigeria, um, outside the country, the reputation of Nigeria is a country, it's a fraud. 
they actually know Nigeria as a fraudulent you know, country, the people there and all that. So the NGOs also, most people, they don't believe in this NGO. So assessing this grant also has actually been very, very difficult. Now, uh, what are the changes that they actually need to make? Uh, the changes, you know, for you to build a reputation, it takes time. Uh, you have to consistently do certain things for people to trust you. So we still have um, good people in Nigeria. We still have good NGOs. Like Leap Africa, we have, they, 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 they are being audited by the likes of JP Morgan and some other uh, international organizations because they are credible. So we must commend those that are doing the right thing in Nigeria. Then those that see NGO as a platform uh, to siphon money, that is what we want to uh, we want to change the mindset of these people, that NGO should not be a platform to actually make money. It should be a platform to give back uh, to the less privileged, to the society, and also to equip the youth. So with that, I believe if we start educating the founders of this NGO, that's what uh, our foundation wants to do. We want to critically look at how to build the capacity of NGO. There's a difference. People don't know in Nigeria, I don't know, but a few persons know that there's a difference between philanthropy and having an NGO. We tend to uh, mix the two together. The fact that you are a philanthropist does not necessarily mean you are capable of running an NGO. So we need to separate the two and see how to build formidable NGO with proper structure. And uh, with that, you know, if people trust you, they will give you access to their grants and they will be willing to help you. So we want to see how to bring founders of NGOs, managers and staff of NGOs together and see how different NGOs can collaborate and build capacity. With time, we we'll begin to change that mindset because the humanitarian sector uh, is a good sector to, to give back to the society and the humanitarian sector is meant to complement uh, government efforts uh, in, in Africa. Okay, doctor, t tell us about you know um, the, the book NGO Mastery. Yeah, the book NGO Mastery, like when I came in the year 2018, I discovered uh, from research, from working with my professor, we look at the humanitarian sector and we discovered that uh, we have various publications, but uh, what we lack is we don't really have a book that specifically tells you how to run an impactful and sustainable NGO. So my prof had to now tell me that, okay, we should look into that uh, that area to see how to come up with a book that will actually guide indigenous NGOs uh, how to run a, an impactful and sustainable uh, NGO. So for my interviews with uh, the various NGOs, I began to look at the loopholes within the sector and how to see how to use the book uh, to serve as a guide uh, for them to uh, to run a, a successful and impactful NGO. Okay, um, uh, you know, you talk, you've talked about, you know, the, the book and also um, your foundation. Now tell us about the Yongo app. You know, this is actually the concept of the app. It's looking different from what we, are, uh, we have right now in Africa. So I'm very sure many youth would like to listen to what the app is about. Yeah, the, the Yongo app uh, was specifically designed to assist NGOs and uh, young people to connect one, to connect with themselves. Uh, and also for them to promote the, their products and also for NGOs to showcase what they are doing. So that hub uh, will also assist young people to connect with technocrats both in the diaspora and also in Nigeria. So with that hub, we'll be able to achieve three things. One, to promote uh, the products or the goods of young, that young people are producing. They will also be able to market their goods with the app connect with technocrats and also NGOs will be able to uh, promote the activities uh, in the hub. Okay, what of um, you know, youth in the rural areas? How will they be able to tap into this? Uh, we, that's why we came up with uh, a three-point solution. Uh, we youth in the, in the rural area, because of uh, internet connectivity, yeah. uh, they may not be able to they may find it difficult uh, to connect using the app because for you to use an app, you need uh, internet to download the app in the first place. But what we are doing with our foundation is also to take this uh, solution to uh, to youth in the rural areas for them also to build their capacity and also for them because you need to be educated uh, for you to use the app in the first place. So we have 
capacity building program for youth in rural area. By the time we educate them, then we'll be able to teach them how to use the app. Okay, so you, you are saying you have to put them through, teach them what to do before they can access this app. So yes, I, what, what I'm so are you we saying you're going to go to training. almost um, every place in, you know in Nigeria and also in Africa, you know, to lecture these youths? Uh, we we may not be able to cover every every uh, every like go to the nuclear nuclear crannies of every uh, villages and all that. But what we want to do within the regions uh, like Southwest, North, we'll pick various communities and start with that then with time when we begin to get sponsor we begin to expand it and begin to train them uh, on digital skills okay so uh, since you've been doing uh, you know this and have you experienced any challenges you know from the government i'm talking about um, as regards to the you know the foundation and also the Yongo app uh, yes uh, we just concluded uh, our training our uh, we just launched the program in worry and uh, we we invited uh, lots of government uh, uh, like politicians and key leaders within within um, within the uh, uh, the community and also within Delta. But most of them didn't come because uh, they didn't really see the need for it. But I believe with consistency, uh, we were able to get some leaders to attend and they saw the need uh, to key into it. With time, you know, when you start something new, uh, it takes time for people to key into it. But with time, uh, we believe we'll get the required support. Now, uh, you know, what you're saying now is that, you know, this app, the foundation, your target audience, of course, they are the youths in Africa. And right now you're not in Africa, you are in United Kingdom. So what are the plans that you've actually put in place so that this can actually run successfully while you're still there in, da in diaspora? Yeah, um, we, we have a team in place. Uh, that comprises of people from different ethnic uh, groups uh, within Africa. Mm -hmm. So our strategy is to ensure that we get uh, different rep different people from different uh, parts of Africa to see how we can uh, publicize the hub and also see how uh, we can promote our various programs, not only in Nigeria, but also in countries like Rwanda and other places. So when we have a formidable team, I believe we'll be able to uh, organized programs and also promote the app in the various uh, African countries. Mm. Dr. Shea, since you are really doing a lot for the for the youth, but you know, how are you able to juggle all this together within a short period of time? Uh, when you, you know, one thing that I, I really don't want uh, is for me not, I don't want people to center uh, the organization or the running of the app and various things mm. uh, around me. So we want to build people that can actually uh, run this thing without me being present. Present, I mean, uh, I'll be coming to Africa from time to time, and I intend to to relocate with time. Uh, but we also want to build a formidable team that can actually run this thing because this thing is not really about Dr. Shelly. It's about uh, supporting uh, young people in Africa. So I believe more young people will be into it. Our next program will likely be in Lagos and Abuja, where we also recruit more volunteers and get more people to uh, to support what we are doing. It's a gradual process. Uh, with time, we'll get there. Mm. Okay, so um, any advice for the youth and also, you know, the NGOs in Nigeria and also in Africa? Uh, my advice for uh, youth in Africa is for them to uh, collaborate and also try to support themselves. Uh, if I see a young person doing something, uh, I should be able to key into what they are doing and give them uh, maximum support. And also for them to remain uh, focused and continue uh, to pursue their vision with time they will achieve it. Then for NGOs, my advice for them is to, uh, to unite and do things together and also see how they can support themselves. Uh, with time, uh, I believe Africa will be great, and I believe uh, the humanitarian sector in Africa uh, will go places uh, with proper collaboration and a good understanding among NGOs. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shi. I'm sure Africa and also Nigerian youths, they believe in your dream. And, you know, they are really looking into the future. The future is a sure looking bright. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shi, for joining me today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.
Yes, and I've been with uh, Dr. Sheyi Maxin. Uh, he's a management consultant, IT uh, professional. He's also the founder of uh, Youngo App and uh, SMEEJ uh, Foundation. He's also the writer of NGO Mastery. And of course, you can always uh, get more of this information on our site. And I, I think I, I told uh, Dr. Sheyi, but I forgot to actually ask you something, Dr. Sheyi. How can we get access to this, your book? Um, my book, um, um, the publisher is in Lagos. Uh, very soon, uh, we'll distribute it uh, uh, in the various uh, bookshop. The publisher is Warita, um, and uh, in Abuja, we're also planning to distribute it uh, in the various uh, bookshop in Abuja. The book is currently at the National uh, Library. Uh, people can access it also very soon on Amazon and other uh, uh, electronic uh, platform. And also. Um what about you know the app, the app Yongo app? Uh, the Yongo app currently uh, is on uh, Play Store. Uh, they can go on Play Store and just uh, go go Yongo Africa uh, app. It will come to pop out and uh, they can download it there as well. Um, we with time we will also try to update the app and to try to improve on uh, the user experience uh, of the app so that people can get to access uh, information, timely information through the app. But they, right now, they can go, go they can go on place to and uh, download it. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Shei. And of course, you've heard the information that do well to go on Play Store to get the app, Young O app. Definitely, it's you know it's an app you know, help meant for youths in Nigeria and also in Africa. Uh, we're very sure many people the people are really coming up, you know, with ways to help the youth and also you know to to to. to share their knowledge with the youth and share that experience with you so do well to get this up you know to get more of our top stories you can always uh, follow us on all our websites uh, on all our social media platforms showing on your screen follow us on our website www.bangatngr.com uh, our top stories are there also we have many shows and many programs we still have other shows coming up so don't go anywhere make sure you stay tuned to your phone stay glued to your phone and also your tab whatever device you're using to watch us because we have many many interesting things still coming up my name is damlola ogushaki and i've been with dr shay on youth and social life